Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Darkest Hour Beta, open beta for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. America Lover. But right now, it's October 4th, 1941, in which we are looking at the Soviets slowly, slowly beaten back by the Axis powers and, yeah, and Finland. We already took out Leningrad, but the reason why um, we're doing this again, now we're, and we're also doing the U.S. project, um, with, with no description. For that, it's fine. It's because what happens here? Something that's kind of crazy, and that crashes the game really hard. So let's go on as we talk about a couple comments, and then I'll talk about it. But uh, someone says, uh, "Can I play as Huey Long in Fuel Redux? Fuel Redux, which is a mod I've never played. I've played Fuel Reich, but I've never played Fuel Redux before. So that that'd be interesting. Maybe I should try that out on my channel sometime." Someone else says, "I know this is just a beta of Dark Star, uh, and you're doing a historical run. Oh, and here we go. But uh, can we try out maybe in the future? Do this again, sort of." But, maybe don't have, like Roosevelt, you know, maybe go with, was it, Wendell Wilkie, Alf Landon, you know, sure, my answer to that is yes. Yes, we can sometime. Um, so, someday, not right now, but definitely someday, especially once this mod is more stable. Um, so, I'm not sure what happened here. I'm not sure how the French Republic just spawned with, oh god, numbers. What do they mean? 20, uh, 36, 36, 46, 46 plus 27, 46. Oh god, that's numbers in my head, 43, 77, 73? I don't think. Uh, I'm actually really tired of the time recording, but yeah, uh, everything but, but Paris was pretty much taken and Brittany. I don't know how this happened, and it looks like, well, the Allies are back already. Wow, now that that's kind of insane. So else plays America in uh, Victory the Dual Monarchy mod for Hearts of Iron Four. Um, and someone else says, can you please upload and finish a series before you do another one? Because sometimes you're excited for the second part of the series, then you watch another series, and the excitement dies a little bit, so. And, uh, also likes my commentary. I'd like to, but sometimes I actually just make a beginning of a new episode, just because I, it's easier sometimes for me to just do that, and instead of just, like, trying to figure out how to do different episodes and stuff like that, or trying to make the same series, I guess. Because sometimes, I spend, I spend hours on each, sometimes, on each video, depending on how cruddy it can get sometimes depending on what happens so that's why i start new episodes new campaigns just because it's just easier and uh someone says prepare to intervene in europe well at this point i don't think i need to prepare europe france just freed itself so yeah i'm not sure how to respond to like europe freeing itself it's great good job europe as we're still in depression um rearm the military sure why not and you ace you sas projects that's not historical either. Wait. Oh, wait. I think the mod is breaking a little bit right now. I'm not going to lie. I remember earlier when I clicked on the French Republic, and they're taking out Italy by single-handedly. Literally just walking in through Italy. Um, I clicked on them, and then the game crashed. So, there are Axis powers. There's some allies here, too. I think this might be the end of Germany, man. And we didn't even do anything yet. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, I want to I wanna get involved. Office of Coordination of Inter-American Affairs. Land Lease Act. I mean, it's November. Do we get Pearl Harbor? I mean, I don't want to get Pearl Harbor, but Japan's not doing anything, so fighting them would be a little more difficult. Probably. And y Yugoslavia still exists, too. They weren't even taken out by the Axis powers, so... I don't know, maybe if I play the Axis powers, it might be easier. Or at least, you know, because everything's based around Germany and Italy, really Germany. Especially in Moist, Moist, Moist. Most of the mods just because they started World War II, so. We're doing okay around here, but. I, I'd be very worried if I was Italy right now. Since there's literally like a couple, few divisions, maybe max. Oh, look, there's a Coliseum. In here, and Rome's about to be walked into. Okay, Rome was lost. Do they form the Italian Social Republic? Germany proper has literally been invaded already in the Sopralkin. Um Acetope separation sounds like fun. It's almost 72. Well, it's December 9th. We haven't been Pearl Harbor yet. Maybe I won't have to intervene in American or European affairs. Wow. That takes so long. Okay, attention. Every decision will be selectable only two times. Okay, well, I guess we'll do some Lenny's Act. Making up, uh, focus on making big guns. For 100 days. Oh, is it for only 100 days? That kind of sucks. I want more. We need. We don't have enough factories to say we can do this for 100 days. There's no way we can say we can do that. So there's no point to do this one yet. 
50% production cost is not bad. 10% is not bad. But, like, the more factories you have, the better, obviously, but still. There's two divisions in Italy. Literally only two divisions. Almost all of Italy is capitulated. Toronto's the capital now. The French have been really pushing into the center here. Luxembourg is back. Wouldn't be surprised if the Soviets were able to push back. They didn't get that far away. Leningrad's still a frontline city, so... Oh! Egypt came back too! At this point, it's just a commentary of how the Allies can single-handedly take back Europe without America. Go figure. Mass produce war. Oh, we need more war support. At most, fifty percent war support. Pro-war radio speeches. Why do we lose? Why do we lose 80, 80 political power? I mean, we have, it's supposed to be cost, but eighty and we lose stability. Why would we lose stability? Pro pro-war rallies. Why do we lose so much political power? I mean, I guess it's just cost war, but still. Holy crap! They've even circled these guys. Uh, the French single-handedly will save Europe from its from the German Empire. Well, there goes Italy. German Empire. Whatever. You're still expanding here, though. This is very weird, not gonna lie. Very, very odd. Well, mandatory service... Don't really need to change anything else for now. Got plenty of carriers now. Heavy load transport, that's not bad, that's actually very good to get. 42 and 40s, 42. Less cap, I want more cap, less base. Because we got more cap. Best fork designs? Sure. Still losing a little bit of money, not good. Lenny sacked. All right, and then this one too, I guess. Ooh, if I click on them, the game's going to crash. If I click on you, the game's not going to crash. Um, send economic aid. Is there a decision I can send them stuff? Operations, rainbow plans, war plan divisions. Great Depression is still very bad for us. I'm not entirely sure if there's anything we can really do. Control nuclear chain reactions. I'm out with the research speed. I like that. <laughs> and the floating back through here too. So, yeah, we'll see. 942. For some reason, the British now have the saw broken. Hmm. And the giant away. Oh, so we need to be a war for this one. And we're not quite there yet. Louisiana maneuvers? Um, let's see. The U.S. military as a whole has not been tested since the Great War. And as such, has fallen behind many other arm armies across the world, with tensions rising in Europe and across the world. We need to ensure that it's modernized and fully prepared for the combat as soon as possible. First up to evaluate the current quality and readiness of our troops. Officers and logistics, which we shall do by scheduling large-scale war games in the wide, open territories of Louisiana. As soon as these exercises are completed, we, they can begin the long time consuming process of revamping and modernizing systems already in place. I, I, I guess, yes. They're still advancing this way. So, and they've almost won here too. I mean, there's literally no one there. They just take the tiles. And they're advancing this on this front too, for the most part. It seems like it at least. Things are not looking good for the for the Axis. I mean, it doesn't help that the French just miraculously spawn 70 plus divisions, but still. So, if I was Uncle Adolf, I'd be kind of worried. How the heck did they spawn 70 some divisions? MEFO bells? Oh, they still have that. Or, or. Free Dream of the Soviets. Wow. Holy crap. Even the Dutch are slightly back. How many divisions does, do these guys have left? Slowly running out of manpower, but it's only one of your mandatory service. So we actually have less divisions than the Germans. And we have 916. 
So, when can we go to war? I'd love to go to war. Counter foreign influences in Latin America. Lose 150 monies. Improve Latin American relations. Move for one day. Sure, they love us in Latin America now. Um, oh, you actually got encircled. Wait, or no? Polish National Republic? Yeah, I guess you did. What well, kind of sucks for you guys? Um... Can we join the war? We're not allowed to join factions. Uh... Okay, interceptors and stuff like that, 42. Go game per oil. Um, 43. Okay, 42, yeah. Well, it's gonna be grind, very, very grindy. North Africa, will, just all of Africa will fall out of the other dudes. We know Marshall's overwhelming firepower, though. Veterans of artillery was proven in the Great War with both its physical and psychological effects taking a toll on the enemy and playing a substantial role in their defeat. With manpower, precious commodity, despite its abundance, it would be rather wise to reform our way of thinking along with the lines of throwing easily produced shells at the enemy rather than soldiers, who are considerably harder to replace. Our proponent of this style of warfare, General George C. Marshall, is also a highly capable organizer and leader, a perfect fit for the position of Army Chief of Staff. From the OSS, at war, Army U US Bureau of Ships, that'd be really good to do. Expand the Pacific defenses. Pacific territories under our administration, especially Hawaii, Guam, and the Philippines, have had their defenses left neglected due to the Great Depression and the general apathy within our nation towards wartime preparation, but with the potential enemies growing more brazen by the day and wishing to expand their spheres of influence, they look lustfully towards their Pacific holdings. These territories are of the utmost strategic importance to our national defense, and if we leave them in the sorry state that they are in at the moment, we're risking them being on the back foot almost immediately if we were to engage in any form of combat in the Pacific. This has got to change. And what are we missing here, actually? Interceptors? Oh, whatever. These game maneuvers. The onset of war seems inevitable for America, thus we need to get our army back in a fighting shape. The U.S. Army has not seen active combat duty since the end of the Great War, and thus we must evaluate the current logistical and doctrinal status of our main fighting force. Some 400,000 soldiers, as well as effectiveness of our combat command structure. The plan includes large-scale maneuvers stretching from the Sabine River to the uh, Kalska uh, U, uh, with dozens of high-ranking officers present to oversee such events. Though such events will be costly, it's necessary to determine the current fighting strength of the army provided to the soldiers, some combat experience even is simply staged. The exercise will um, pit the Ar Red Army versus the Blue, including armor groups, anti-tank groups, or cavalry flanking divisions, and several air force tasks or air task forces. With the conclusion of the maneuvers, we have learned a great deal. With the possible plans of comp on the horizon, the necessity of tank destroyers has become apparent. With the majority of our defensive doctrine revolving around knocking out as many tanks as possible, an immobilized enemy cannot fight with as much of our doctrine focused on a mobile envelopment. The odds of an American victory looks high. A modernized American army waits. Oh, cool. guess. I don't want to spend that 150 though, because we don't have that money. <laughs> Already maxed out on uh, money. Minus 96% is just so much. It's 1942. I don't th I think this game is uh, it's still in beta. I'm just going to say it's still in the beta. So we'll see what happens. And here we have Marshall's overwhelming firepower. We get more attack. Oh, the never war must be paid for. Oh god. We're not gonna have any money, are we? Um, tank destroyer doctrine? Well, make the thunder louder. I guess we'll start with that one, I suppose. We're still just kinda hanging out. Since arm is fully embraced a shock and awe doctrine. Oh look at that. Uh by George General George C. Marshall, we have now come to a small roadblock to the complete implementation of these tactics. Our guns simply don't have enough firepower to provide the overwhelming amount of destruction needed to ensure the neutralization of all but the most sturdy enemy positions. During this banal, yet relatively simple problem, the government, with the enthusiastic support of the Army High Command, oh god, has decided to immediately issue contracts for the designing and construction of a large variety of large caliber guns. Hedgehogs? Nice. Um get some more of them. River movement, soft attack. Well, is there anything else we can do here? Yes. And one carbine, yes. Um, we're going to take some loans out. Uh, I mean, I want to, I want to join, but I don't want to join. Cavalry of the future, 
Tank destroyer doctrine. Tanks and other mechanized vehicles will almost certainly be the main vehicles or weapons or troops to face if we engage an enemy on the battlefield. Those armored beasts will provide a great challenge and if used effectively, uh, could absolutely decimate our forces. Regardless of what other tactics we employ, we must prevent this from becoming reality. The plan will be able to allocate plenty of resources to develop, uh, developing, coming up with anti-tank strategies and technologies, which will surely give our troops the best chance possible to defeat their adversaries. So, hope so. Well, you know what? At this point, I think I'm going to see and tab over see the UK can invite us to the Allies. Punishing the French once again. Um, we're in debt. We're so deep in debt, or we have, we're about to have a menacing bankruptcy. Facing a catastrophic economic situation. We're taking too many loans so that our interest rates are higher than our current income. We have to change this within the next zero weeks to have declare ourselves bankrupt. And as you can see on screen, the bankruptcy really sucks. And, uh, yeah. Um, like, it's still an open bed, don't get me wrong. I did tap over to the Japanese to see what we could do. And I did force them to go to war with the Chinese states. So, yeah. Even then. Japanese aren't doing that well. They did invade Shandong uh, region, but yeah, this isn't. This is a uh, very riveting as we're doing the Two Ocean Navy Act, which has no description as well. But you know, whatever. Um, I want to go to war. Huh? Our economy has totally collapsed because there's nothing we could do. Because it's, uh, well, up their dockyard output, and this is going to hurt us for about half a year. It's not bad. Um. Yeah, there's really not much we can do at this point. Oh. Oh, God. Yeah, minus 100% income. I think that's a bit too extreme. I'll be honest. I know that the dads are trying to, like, um, uh, you know, roleplay the effects of the Great Depression and whatnot, and that makes perfect sense. But at the same time, like, there's got to be more, or at least some way to force to go to war. I think the AI is just bugged at this point, so... I think it's just completely bugged, but whatever. And and, and the devs did say it, it, it might it might be bugged. Like I'm not gonna blame the devs too much for this. It's it is what it is. I want to try America out, see what they're like. So, but former airborne divisions, analysts in the Department of War, are responsible for observing and analyzing foreign military capabilities, have recently spoken about a novel concept of using large formations of airborne troops, and risking the US usage and demonstrations by similar armies in Europe. The usage is varied and flexible. They can be employed for seizing key points, such as bridges to speed up the advance of traditional ground forces, or for risky yet rewarding maneuvers to create vertical envelopments, i.e. to cut off retreating paths of enemy formations to encircle and destroy them, with paratroopers acting as the anvil on the ground, armies hammering to destroy the enemy army. Keeping the interests of the nation at heart and the opinions of several of our strategic experts, formation of several division sized airborne units for the army has been ordered. M1 carbines? Very nice. Oh, there goes the general government. Yeah, I think you really have to play as Japan, maybe, or at least Germany, to uh, see if we could actually really do something here. So, but you know what? That's what for, what we're here to learn. Small arms, 1942. It's not like you can afford them anyways, but you know whatever. <clears throat> the Sherman tank. Working upon its predecessor, the M3 medium tank, which was supposed to be a stopgap measure, the U.S. Army Ordnance Department has come up with the design of the M4 Sherman medium tank. Working upon past domestic lessons while incul inculcating some through the British and Canadian inputs, the M4 Sherman has been designed to be cheap, reliable, and of adequate quality. The tank is supposed to be highly reliable owing to the utilization of a vertical volute spring suspension, rubber bush, tracks, and a rear-mounted ra radial uh, engine with a drive sprocket in front and light enough to be easily loaded into cargo ships and trains for quick transportation over land and seas. Its chassis is also vert versatile and can be adopted for a host of other roles, which all add to the value of this particular armored vehicle. <clears throat> Reinforce the atolls. Well, it'd be nice to have money, but you literally don't get enough money as America. Uh, I mean, I, maybe, at least maybe just in this campaign. I don't know, because uh, as you can tell, we don't make anything. This this effect, the aftermath of Black Thursday is. I know what, like I said earlier, I know it's supposed to be punishing and whatnot, but I think it's just a bit too punishing right now. It's a bit too much, especially after everything we've done, because there's no there's no way to counteract weekly unemployment. I don't know. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. The Soviet Union is doing is okay. Um. Oh, the German Reich is not doing okay, though. They have more divisions. Well, they might not have more divisions. Of course, they're on a two-front war against the Finns as well, and they've actually not recovered Leningrad yet. <clears throat> it is 43, everybody. Happy 1943. We're only in debt, that's all. What else is new? And what else? 43, 43. Sure, why not? M3 Stuart. And that's a light tank, isn't it? Yeah. M3 Lee. Heavy Weapons 42 as well. Thirty-six. Forty-two. Can I issue more currency, please? 
I'd love to have some more money. I'd love to have money, period. You know, that's just me. Um, Sherman Tank. Cavalry of the future? According to the few radical generals, advancements in the field of warfare have made the role of conventional cavalry and in its extent the foot soldier obsolete. These men often provide the examples of General John H. Pershing's costly frontal assault during the Great War, which caused massive casualties to further the case. These series stray away from the conventional school of thinking and propose that tanks and other armored vehicles are the way to win the wars that are sure to come. Whatever may be the case, infantry men are supposed to be slow, while our cavalry is supposed to be fast and strike hard. However, it's not necessarily the case. The current cavalry fueled by the U.S. Army is cumbersome, slow, and often extremely vulnerable. It's obvious that the roles of the warfare have changed. Whether they may be used for infiltration tactics or in conjunction with armor, first step to evolve our infantry or army into a modern capable force will be to equip them with a motorized transport along with the likes of light armored vehicles such as car scout cars, which will suff sufficiently answer the drawn question of how to provide troops with mobility along with adequate protection. <clears throat> At this point in this campaign, I just want to watch the Germans die to the Soviets. I think that's pretty much what we can do. There's really not much else we can do, so... Paris has been lost once again, so... I don't know how these rose up initially. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Still fear into the enemy? Move gun, motor characters. Use the combined arms, so I can't go this way. Attack, attack, attack some more. Well, it's still fear into the enemy pilots. Well, not always have friendly faces in the skies. That is just reality of war. The effects of enemy aerial superiority proven to be just as devastating on ground troops. And if we are to prevent our armies from making them the same mistakes as other armies, being decimated from the skies, we must make some serious investments in developing effective anti air technology. These strides forward will make our armies capable of declaring or defending themselves from attack from the air and make those enemy passing to us while flying towards their potential demise. Come on, Soviets. Oh god, they're almost out. But once they're all, I mean, they, they still have to garrison all of France, so. Oh, wow, they just lost 3,000 more, huh? Deployed manpower. Wow. I mean, obviously, it's all mostly in their army. Um, Just a little bit in the air. Even more than the Navy than the air, huh? They, are they... Oh, uh, we just got... They just got a little more because it was the first of the month. And now they're out. The Soviets still got some manpower. These guys have none. Doesn't mean they have any guns, though, but, you know, you never know her. Know her? No. Oh, okay then. They, huh. I don't think these guys have any manpower either. The cavalry is of the future. And then, improve the gun motor carriages. Uh, while the Army's efforts to upgrade its firepower capacity, the brass has sent down the order to start development of upgraded motor carriages. A relatively new concept in the world of warfare, motor gun carriages are heavy artillery and treads. A cheap and relatively easy way to get heavy artillery fire close to the battlefield with less risk and more maneuverability. You should made from the hull of a tank, those vehicles. These vehicles will help make our new doctrine pay the most dividends in combat. M1 bazookers? Nice. 43, better marines? Sure. Identification parallel texts? Sure. Nice. I'm just waiting until July so we don't be bankrupt anymore. Yeah. Um. Oh, they actually come back a little bit? Huh. Well, you never know. WMDs. Main class, huh? Well, sure, why not? Did they mobilize more? They might have mobilized more. They got four to six guys. Never mind. What happened to their divisions? One to a hundred. Oh my goodness. What is the UK up to? Like, why don't they just help out? Oh, they took some states here too. Krakow. I mean, I guess I could cheat and just force my way into the war, but still. These guys are definitely struggling down here too. China's actually pushed them back. And we're still in debt, don't get me wrong, we're still in debt. By God. Chalk and all though. Many of our journalists who served during the Great War learned hard lessons about the nature of modern warfare. For George C. Marshall, that was the primacy and tactical power of artillery and the aerial bombardment. Through the interwar years, Marshall had had the chance to study and test many of his ideas. Now, with the position of Army Chief of Staff, he can make the final reforms necessary to make his doctrine the prevailing one throughout the entire Army. The United States industrial powers made the Marshall's plan a reality. With overwhelming artillery and other supporting attacks, the U.S. Army should be able to simply blast its way through any enemy lines. I don't think it'd be a nom. I'd love to expand Pearl Harbor, but, you know, we're not allowed to make any money. And it's not an easy system to just fix. I mean, I'm sure it's relatively difficult to fix or to do that. You know, trying to put an economy in, uh, hoi for, 
Not easy. There was there was an economy, slight economy, or at least money in Hoi three, but definitely not Hoi four. I guess Hoi two as well. Wow, they're completely out of everything. The Germans have heavy weapons, support equipment, and some trains and some light armor. Hey, we're no longer bankrupt. God, this still sucks. Expand the engineer combat battalion. The Royal U.S. Army Corps of Engineers with instrumental victory in the Great War. And they'll play a pivotal role in future engagements. From the construction of makeshift bridges at important crossings to sabotage behind enemy lines, engineers provide a wide variety of military applications. Due to our isolation from the European theater, we may become necessary for engineers to assist in naval assaults. If we want to be able to fight a war in Europe or in the Pacific, we need to expand the capabilities and provide them with closer integration with their division. Also, I did tap over the UK earlier. Ooh. Oh, we had money. But we did. I tap over, and they, there was nothing for them to like call the U.S. into the war, or, like, you know, be allies. They're like, we can hold a speech, and that's pretty much it. Oh, Warsaw has fallen. Ooh. My god, this has got to be brutal. I still own Leningrad. It's pretty bad. Can I send you an attaché? You, I think you rejected us last time, yeah? Yeah, we don't even have any political power anyway, so. Well, Italy's mostly back. Oh, one of the reasons why the UK can't do anything is France was, uh, like, capitulated or not capitulated? I can't remember. Don't mind us, America's just dying over here. Then again, I guess Europeans are literally dying, but whatever. Mustangs? Sure, why not? I mean, they're slowly getting there. The M47 Patton. Field usage of the current generation of heavy tanks proving their capabilities to be seriously lacking. The M26 Purging seem to have an insufficient mobility and being very unreliable. Working upon our past lessons and addressing the immediate need of a sufficiently armored and gun tank of the heavy category, while boasting the mobility of lighter tanks, knowing that the M46 was a stopgap solution, and the T-42 would not be possibly ready for field deployment anytime soon, with officers of the armored force having serious misgivings about its projected performance. The M47 Patent Tank has been proposed. The M47, named of honor of our country's <clears throat> foremost proponent of tank warfare, boasts the number, the tur boasts the turret of the M T-42 mounted on its existing M46 hole, while some are voicing concerns over the M47 being another stopgap measure or solution. Army officials feel the improvements over the M46 firepower and armor are worth the risk. Already, the Detroit Arsenal des designated a production line for the production uh, M47 as soon as the final research wor work and field trials are completed. Wait, what happened here? How did they join? Wait, what? Oh, wait, what? Wait, what happened? Did they win? How did they... Legionary State. Landsgruppe. They're fascists against the Germans. Well, all right then. They've mostly stopped their attacks, though. I mean, they're really weak, but still. Oh, what's this? Oh, another bankruptcy? Is that all? Yes, we've had one bankruptcy. How about another bankruptcy? We can't even make political power, so. We're still depressed here. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess we could just go to war, but, I mean, just to disappoint how we can't. So, we'll see what happens very soon. Well, everyone, um, apparently the Polish National Republic just popped out. I, that, led by Marcel Jelen, Jelen, and they joined the Axis. So, they ended up trapping a whole bunch of, uh... Soviet troops right in the middle. Um, I forced the Allies, or the forced the UK, to accept Yugoslavia into the Allies. Um, but they're not joining the war yet. Um, I did tab over again to Japan. I uh, actually lose in, in Africa. They're still fighting down here. And I did see a decision to strike, or, like, make a small strike against us, like us as Americans, against Pearl Harbor. You know, a small strike on Hawaii. But there was never a small strike. I never got anything. So, yeah. Um, actually, how many divisions do you have? They got three ships. That's three more than I thought they would have. Not bad. Not bad. Not great. But uh, yeah. There's not. I'm sorry. I apologize for this campaign. I think I just got to end it here because nothing's going on. There's nothing we can do. I mean, I could always just cheat. I guess I technically already have in this campaign by forcing. 
uh, the UK had accept Yugoslavia into the Allies by forcing Japan to go to war with China, even though the Chinese are winning, and forcing Japan to launch a strike against Pearl Harbor, but even we couldn't we couldn't get Pearl Harbor. So I do apologize once again for not being able to do anything. Um, we're bankrupt again. I mean, that, you have like that. Yeah, we're bankrupt again. Um, yeah, I apologize. I'd love to continue this, but you know what? I will come back and do this someday. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully, really be able to do anything, do stuff here. So, um, you know what? You might actually be able to do this as well in the future. Encourage decolonization. But this does nothing for the economy. So, like, this would all be not worth doing. Because a lot of the unemployment stuff probably gets done when we, or at least we get, it doesn't really matter as long as you're at war. So, yeah. Huh. But you know what, we'll do this again. Maybe maybe we'll try Germany out, or the Soviet Union. One of these two. Because not most of these countries don't have focus trees, unique focus trees yet, so. We'll try one of these two out and see what it's actually like, and since everything's based kind of around Germany, for now, um, I'll just try it out. So, other than that, I don't know. But, hey, if you enjoy this campaign, regardless, well, there goes the French second time. Well, do consider leaving a like, sub, uh, subscribe if you're new, and uh, just go by the link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in the campaign. Thanks for watching, and have a debt-free rest of your day.